The second I stepped off the train into the city of vaudeville, I could feel the weight of its melancholy in the air. Even the drizzle that clung to the city's grimy cobblestones felt a shade darker than your everyday downpour. Vaudeville was a city of high stakes and low morals where vice and virtue danced a wicked waltz. Street lamps flickering like burnt out stars were the only guide through the maze of rain soaked alleyways and whispering shadows. My name's Martini, detective, troubleshooter, and a lousy sucker for hard luck stories. This wasn't my first circus, but this act was a three ring special. Three murders, no leads, and a city on the brink of bedlam. The victims were as different as chalk and cheese, each a symbol of the city's vibrant veneer. A young dancer who moved like poetry in motion. Her life cut short mid pirouette. The socialite, a woman who knew the city's pulse better than anyone else. And then there was the businessman, the embodiment of vaudeville's promises of progress, snuffed out like a candle in the wind. The usual peace in vaudeville was off kilter, replaced by the discordant notes of fear and suspicion. Strangers viewed each other through wary eyes, neighbors turned to strangers, and every shadow seemed to hold a secret. The once vibrant city had become a stage, the curtain drawn on a grim play of mystery and murder. In a city without harmony, the police chief was the conductor trying to keep the orchestra in tune. Gretzky was his name, a seasoned cop with a granite jaw and a heart that had seen better days. There was a stark tension, a raw fear that danced like St. Elmo's fire in his eyes. Whatever was happening in vaudeville had Gretzky out of his depth, and that was a sight I'd never thought I'd see. If anyone could make sense of this twisted tale, it would be him. I'd better head to the police station and have a chat with Gretzky for starters. Gretzky, okay. So I'm Detective Martini, in theory. This is great. I like, I like the... I assume that's all AI art in the start there. Let's have a look. Map. Accuse somebody. Notebook. Go to the police station and ask Detective Martini about the murders. But... I thought I was Detective Martini. Oh, nothing else. So I can just... I can maybe use... Put the things in there. Uh, police station. Hello, Chief Gretzky. What brings you here, Detective Martini? I was told to speak to you about the investigation. Oh, really? And what exactly do you want to know about the investigation? Um, what do we know about the first victim, the young dancer? Yeah, you mean Haley Greenwood, right? Well, we don't have much information on her yet, apart from the fact that she was a dancer and that her body was found in an alley behind a club she worked at. Why do you ask? What club was that? I see you're trying to piece together the puzzle, Detective. The name of the club is irrelevant at this point, but if you must know, it's called the Velvet Room. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, sorry for the dumb questions. I'm just trying to get the basics so that I can go out and start doing my job. No need to apologize, detective. It's always better to have all the information before you start working. Is there anything else you need to ask me? Do we know anything about the socialite? Which socialite are you referring to, detective? <laughs> We've had a few high-profile individuals in vaudeville recently. The the other murder victim that was a socialite? <laughs> no. I cannot help you with that. <laughs> no, the other murder victim who was a socialite. Detective, are you sure you have your facts straight? None of the victims we've identified so far were known to be a socialite. We have a 23-year-old dancer, a 57-year-old finance man, and a young woman whose identity we haven't confirmed yet. Okay, what can you tell me about the 57-year-old? Nicola Grossman, you mean? He was a well-known figure in the world of finances, 
but beyond that, we don't have much information on him. His body was found outside Pascala's grocery shop in the morning. Do you have any leads on the case, or are you just gathering information at this point? Just gathering information, thanks. Is there anything else you're curious about, Martini? Can you give me the victim's names again, please? Of course, the victim's names are Maria Jensen, Haley Greenwood, and Nicola Grossman. Why do you ask? Do you have any leads on the case? I'm sorry. Why, why do you ask? <laughs> I'm gonna try to, <laughs> try to get the gist here. Okay, um... Let's do a... Victims. <laughs> just want to write down some stuff. This guy. <laughs> Why do I ask? Just being nosy. Just gossip. Can I go to the next line? Haley. Oh yeah. Green. Oh. Green. Wood. Nicola. Um, so were they? Can I scroll up here? Oh, I can. Okay. Great, so I can go and maybe make some more notes. Nicola Grossman was the 57-year-old finance man. And... Oh, okay, so the socialized the one they haven't confirmed, I guess, because the the cutscene at the start knew who that was. Um, Maria... Was Maria... Maria was the dancer? <laughs> it, my accent is gonna probably cause problems because it, it heard murder victim as booby automotive victim. <laughs> Don't know how it got that. Maria. Why is he giving me such a hard time about asking questions? <laughs> the name of the club is irrelevant. <laughs> like, well, can I go there and like check it out? Amazing. Uh, I'm loving this already. Oh, Haley Greenwood was the dancer. 23 dancer. Um. So. Nicola was outside the grocer. Um, I will put social light in there. Since we kind of know that inside information. Nicola. I just scroll down. Oh, here we go. That's easier. Click and drag. Easy. So she was outside the velvet something? Velvet room. Oops. And something grosser. I have to I have to take notes, otherwise I'm not gonna remember anything. Terrible short term memory. Where are you? Pascals! Pascals? Bursaries. Alright, so that's, that's up to there. Okay. Oh. Tried to turn the mic back on and it just out to here. I wonder if that other cop knows anything. Um, hello? Oh, well, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, you know? And it's better safe than sorry, isn't it? I mean, we don't want to jump the gun and get ahead of ourselves. Ahead of ourselves? On what? Well, you never can tell, can you? 
it's always best to err on the side of caution. I don't want to speak out of turn or anything like that. What's going on with you? No, nothing's going on with me. I'm just a simple man, you see. I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, if you know what I mean. But I try my darndest to do my job the right way. I'm really stumped by this guy. I mean, my first instinct is he's the the killer. Because I'm just like, um, what the? He's trying his darndest. Frick! I don't even know what to ask. Ahead of ourselves. He doesn't want to step on any toes. Uh, how do I word? How do I ask him? Uh, oh, well, how about, how about, did you attend any of the murder scenes? Uh, I don't think I'm the one to ask about that, you know? I don't want to get into hot water or stir the pot. I'm not one to rock the boat or make waves. Were you with the team at the murder scenes? I'm not sure if I'll be with the team at the Muta scenes. I mean, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew, you understand. And I don't want to put the cart before the horse. But if Chief Greatska needs me, I'll be there in a jiffy. What do you do around here? Oh, you know, I'm just a small fish in a big pond around here. But every little bit helps, right? I'm here to lend a hand and do my part. And if there's anything else you need, don't hesitate to ask. What have you been doing today? Today, just the same old, same old, you know. Keeping my nose to the grindstone and my shoulder to the wheel. Try to be a good aid and do my best. Nothing to write home about, really. What work have you done today, Constable? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think my work is anything to crow about. It's just a drop in the bucket, you see. But every little bit helps, as they say. I'm just trying to keep my head above water and do my part for the greater good. Outmaneuvered me. <laughs> I'm so suspicious of him and I don't know what to ask. I mean, maybe he has been getting coffee all day, but I have a feeling he's been stabbing people. So. <laughs> where, where were you on the night of the murders? <laughs> Let's try that. No, I'm going back in. Constable. Jones. Well, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but as they say, two heads are better than one. I just hope my head is good enough to be part of this investigation. You know what they say, when the bone death's tough, the tough get going, but I'm not sure if I'm tough enough for this. Maybe I should just stick to knitting and leave the police work to the professionals. Where were you on the night of the murders? Oh, um, I don't really remember. I was probably at home with my mother. We were watching some old movie, you know, the kind that made you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I'm not really one for going out and about, especially at night. I prefer to stay in and read a good book or knit. But like they always say, curiosity killed the cat, and I guess I'm not really the curious type. This doesn't really seem like the line of work for you, then. I suppose you're right. But as they also say, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Besides... I'm here to assist Chief Grayskin any way I can. After all, teamwork makes the dream work. May I speak to your mother? 
I'm not sure if that would be possible. You know what they always say, a man's home is his castle. She doesn't like to entertain visitors, especially strangers. And you know what they always say, better safe than sorry, but if it's absolutely necessary, I could ask her. Although, like they always say, if looks could kill, she might not take kindly to the intrusion. Uh, if, if you could ask her if she would speak to me, I'd appreciate it. Oh, um, sure, let me, uh, let me see what she says. But you have to remember, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, so, uh, maybe just be polite and respectful. And like they also say, patience is a virtue, so maybe just give me a moment to talk to her. Take your time. You know where to find me. Uh, yes, thank you. But you know what they always say, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, and the early bird catches the worm, but... Um, Chief Gritsky? What do you have for me, Detective Martini? Is there any new development in the case? Yeah, I have a strong suspicion that Constable Jones might be responsible for the murders. Oh really? And why do you think that, Detective? Do you have concrete evidence to back up your suspicion? Constable Jones is evasive and incredibly strange. Um, that's interesting. Can you give me some examples of his strange behavior? He works for you. Have you not noticed anything strange? Of course, I have noticed the peculiarities of all my subordinates. But as the police chief, I need more than just a hunch to accuse someone of a crime. So, please enlighten me. What kind of peculiarities did you observe in Constable Jones that lead you to suspect him? It's really hard to put into words, uh, but do you trust him? Trust is not a matter of personal preference, detective. As the police chief, I have to rely on my officers to carry out their duties with honesty and integrity. I have no reason to doubt the professionalism and honesty of any member in my team unless there is concrete evidence suggesting otherwise. Now, can you tell me more about why you think that about Constable Jones? He creeps me out. Detective Martini, I appreciate your concern, but I need more than just a feeling to accuse someone of murder. If you want me to consider your suspicion, you need to provide me with some solid proof or at least a specific incident that leads you to think that Constable Jones is the culprit. So, can you give me something more substantial to work with? I'd like to speak to his mother first. Do you know where I can find her? His mother? Why do you want to speak to her? Do you think she might have some information that could help us solve the case? Yes, that's why I would like to speak to her. I see. And how do you think speaking to his mother could be helpful to the investigation? Is there something specific that you are hoping to learn from her? Yes, there is, and I'm not prepared to discuss it at this time. Alright, if you feel that talking to Constable Jones' mother could yield some valuable information, then go ahead and speak to her. Just make sure that you follow proper protocol and don't harass or intimidate her in any way. And please, keep me informed about any new developments in the case. Where does she live, or where could I find her? I'm sorry, but as the police chief, I cannot disclose personal details about my officers or their families without a valid reason. If you can provide me with a legitimate reason for wanting to know the whereabouts of a police officer's family member, then I might be able to help you. Do we know of any witnesses that I could speak to? Well, we have interviewed several witnesses, but so far, none of them have been very helpful. 
however, if you think that there are still some potential witnesses that we haven't talked to yet, then by all means, go ahead and track them down. Just make sure that you follow proper protocol and don't harass or intimidate anyone in the process. Constable Jones, you're my my first suspect. Um, thank you. But you know what they always say, don't kill your chickens before they hatch and pay for your fats, but You misunderstand. Um, like they also say <laughs> Lovely guy. Okay, so the groceries is where the guy was found. Grave is Morgue? Ooh, can we investigate can we look at the bodies? Hello, coroner. I believe you are referring to me, the coroner. My name is not coroner. Is there something I can assist you with? Perhaps regarding the abduction reports. Yeah, tell me about those reports. Well, the autopsy results show that the cause of death for both Nicola Grossman and Haley Greenwood was due to blunt trauma. However, there are some discrepancies in the wounds and injuries. Nicola Grossman was hit on the back of the neck with a butcher's knife while Haley Greenwood was hit several times in the head with a blunt object. Possibly a stiletto shoe. As for Maria Jansen, the wound suggests that she was attacked by an animal, but the investigation is still ongoing. What kind of animal? It's difficult to say for sure without further analysis, but the nature of the lacerations and puncture marks on her body suggests that it could have been a large predator, such as a bear or a wolf. But again, we can't be certain until we have more information. It's a tragic case, and my heart goes out to the victim and their loved ones. Okay. So... That was a bit of a mix-up because she said blunt trauma and then said actually it was a butcher's knife for um, Nicola. Haley. Stiletto. Johnson, somehow, Predator. The Predator. It's a tragic case, yada yada. A bear or a wolf. Actually, maybe I should put that as well. Okay. I don't know how any of those are linked then. Can I see the bodies? Well, detective, I understand your curiosity, but I'm afraid I cannot allow you to see the bodies without proper authorization. As a coroner, it is my duty to ensure that the bodies are treated with respect and dignity. Besides, the abductions have already been performed, and the bodies are now in the hands of the authorities. If you have any questions about the cause of death or other medical details, I would be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Did you notice anything unusual about the young dancer? Yes, I remember the autopsy report on Haley Greenwood. She had multiple blunt force traumas to the head, consistent with the pattern of a stiletto shoe. The fragments of the shoe heel were found lodged in her skull. It was a brutal and senseless act of violence. It's always heartbreaking to examine the body of someone so young and full of life. Anything unusual other than the wounds? Hmm, let me think. Yes, there were some unusual findings in the case of Maria Jensen. 
She had extensive bite marks all over her arms and other parts of her body and one of her forearm bones was fractured due to the strength of the bite. The wounds were deep and ragged and it looked like they were caused by an animal. It was a very strange case and I've never seen injuries like that before in my career as a coroner. It's a tragic reminder of the unpredictability and brutality of death. And what about the last victim? I'm sorry, but I don't have any information about the last victim. Could you please clarify which victim you're referring to? The elder gentleman. Oh, you mean Nicola Grossman? Yes, I remember his autopsy report. He had a deep wound on the back of his neck consistent with a butcher's knife. Based on the wound pattern and medical evidence, it appears that he died from a sharp injury to his spinal cord, causing immediate paralysis and eventual death. It's a tragic and violent way to go. My heart goes out to his loved ones during this difficult time. Okay, thank you. Sure, sorry, I'm a bit surprised. I just received some new information about Maria Jansen's case. Apparently, there's a possibility that the bite marks on her body were not caused by an animal, but rather by a human. I'm not sure what to make of this yet, but it certainly adds a new dimension to the case. It's always disheartening when something like this happens and it reminds us of the fragility of life. Where did this new information come from? It came from the lab analysis of the samples taken from the wounds. The results suggest that the bites were made by a person with a rare genetic disorder that causes their teeth to be unusually sharp and pointed. It's an extremely rare condition and I've only seen a few cases in my career. It's a tragic reminder of how complex and unpredictable the world can be and how important it is to approach each investigation with an open mind and a willingness to learn. Yes, um, do do we know of any locals who have unused? That's a good question. It's possible that the perpetrator has not been diagnosed with the condition yet. Or they may be aware of it but have chosen not to seek treatment. It's also possible that they have a milder form of the disease that has not been diagnosed yet. Either way, it's a difficult situation and my heart goes out to the victim and their loved ones. It's a stark reminder of how vulnerable we all are to the whims of fate and the randomness of life. Oh my god, <laughs> the amount that they just go on. Uh, maybe I'll ask the chief about that. Chief Gretzky, do we know of any locals who have unusually sharp or pointed teeth? Dang it. Chief Gretzky, do we know of any locals who have unusually sharp or pointed teeth? Um, interesting question. Why do you ask, Detective Martini? Do you have reason to suspect someone with such features? Yes, I do. I see. Can you tell me more about this person with unusual teeth? What makes you think they might be involved in the recent murders? Human teeth marks on one of the victim's corpses. Interesting. And what exactly do you think this means, detective? Are you suggesting that the killer has some sort of dental abnormality? Yes, that's what I'm suggesting. Do we know anybody like that in town? Well, that's definitely a possibility. We don't have any suspects with unique oral characteristics on our radar at the moment. But we can certainly look into it. Can you give me any more information about the tooth marks? Were they particularly large or small, for example? Just pointed and sharp, and the coroner believes it's a rare genetic disease. A rare genetic disease, you say? That could be a valuable lead. But how many people in vaudeville could possibly have such a condition? It can't be too many, can it? Hopefully one. 
That's quite the assumption you're making, detective. Are you sure we can narrow down that much? What if there are more than one person with this unique dental characteristic? Or what if our killer is wearing some sort of prosthetic to leave fake teeth marks? We need to keep all possibilities open, even if we have a strong hunch. I'd like to try and narrow the pool of suspects. Do you have any other suggestions about how we might do that? Certainly, we could start by looking into the medical records of anyone who has been treated for such a condition in the past. We could also ask around town and see if anyone knows of someone with such an abnormality. But tell me, what makes you so confident in your theory, detective? Do you have any other evidence to support it? Not at the moment, but I'll get back out there and find some. All right then, good luck with your investigation, detective. I'll be interested to hear what you find. In the meantime, I'll continue to look into other leads and keep an open mind. Let's catch this killer together, shall we? Let's. Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean by blitz. Let's. Let's. L-E-T-S. My damn, damn New Zealand accent. Where do we want to go? I haven't heard of many of these places. Blackwoods, Coral, Morg. Caban Violet. Country Club. What's the name of the club? Velvet room. See, I don't see the velvet room. The um, groceries there, right? Yeah, groceries. Oh, hello, miss. I'm sorry. I seem to be lost in thought. It's just that I miss my dear late husband terribly. But enough of that. Let's focus on finding the best oranges in the store, shall we? I'm sorry for your loss. Who was your husband? Thank you for your condolences, but it's not a topic that brings me much joy. My Victor was a very traditional man, always trying to keep me in check. But now that he's gone, the world is my oyster, and nothing will stop me from enjoying all the pleasures that life has to offer. Good for you. Oh, don't worry about me, dear. I'm not one to dwell on sadness for too long. Life is too short not to enjoy it to the fullest. Now, let's see if we can find those beautiful oranges, shall we? I absolutely agree with you. You must enjoy every moment, if possible. Well, you know what they say. Sometimes life gives you lemons, and you just have to make lemonade. Or in our case, orange juice. And when you're as charming as me, people will want to drink it out by the gallon. I have to think about that. She's in. <laughs> whoa! What have we got here? Uh, hello? Hi there. Welcome to my grocery store. Is there anything I can help you find today? Maybe some fresh vegetables or a nice cut of meat. Oh, it's the. Or maybe you're here for some juicy gossip about vaudeville and its citizens. Oh, it's Trust the... me, <laughs> I know all the latest news and rumors. The store owner, and he's doing the like classic RPG bar bartender thing offering me quests um I just thought of some random guy standing in the store okay uh RPG bar owner yeah what's the latest news on the street oh let me tell you I just heard the wildest rumor about the Duchess of Kent apparently she was seen sneaking out of the opera house with a man who was not her husband can you believe it and that's not even the half of it there's also talk about a secret society forming among the artists and poets in town. They're planning some kind of grand performance, but nobody knows exactly what it is. Oh, the intrigue. The, the, oh, the intrigue, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need a whole thing for like RPG guy. It's cool. Uh, okay, so what did we have? Secret society and the Duchess is seeing 
was seen sneaking out of the Opera House, Duchess of Kent. Kent affair sneaking out of Opera House. And Secret Society of Artists. I still think it's that cop though. It's got to be. He's got to be the murderer. No, come back, Pascal. Miss Potter, how are you? Oh, and just a little blue, dear. My cat, Mr. Whiskers, has been ignoring me lately. But don't worry, I'll find a way to get his attention again. He can't resist my cooking. That's great. I hope you two can make amends. Do you know anything about the artists and poets in town? Well, I don't really know much about those artsy types. They're always so dramatic, aren't they? All I care about is my appearance and reputation. After all, one can never be too careful in vaudeville. What is your reputation? Why, I know for being quite charming and classy, of course. And my family's wealth doesn't hurt either. But I do have my flaws, like anyone else. For example, I simply cannot resist a good mushroom picking expedition. It's my guilty pleasure. Did you know Maria Jansen? Maria Jansen, you say? I don't believe I've had the pleasure of meeting her. But I do love meeting new people, especially those in the arts. Perhaps you could introduce us sometime. How about Haley Greenwood? Did you know her? Haley Greenwood? No, I'm afraid I don't know her either. But it seems like a lot of unfortunate events have been happening lately. Who knows what kind of secrets are lurking around our beloved vaudeville. Did you ever meet Nicola Grossman? Oh my, are you accusing me of knowing these people? How very mischievous of you. But no, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I have never met Nicola Grossman. Damn it, <laughs> I really don't know what to say. I'm just trying to find somebody who... Oh, it, just, it would have been nice if somebody, yeah, if, if some, if I, I expected her being a sort of socialite, might have known lots of people in town, you know, be kind of on the gossip, uh, gossip trail, but I guess not. Um, hey Pascal, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well, thank you. I've been busy keeping up with the latest gossip around town. Have you heard about the recent murders? It's all anyone can talk about around here. Oh yeah, what are people saying? Well, everyone has their own theories and suspicions. Some people think it's the work of a serial killer, while others believe it's the result of some kind of dark magic or sinister cult. And of course, there are those who think it's just a coincidence and that there's no connection between the deaths at all. What do you think? I don't have an, any theories yet. Do you have a theory? Oh, I have plenty of theories. But that's all they are, really. Just wild speculations and gossip. It's hard to know what to make of it all. But one thing's for sure. It's definitely shaking up the town. Everyone's on edge, and it's hard to know who to trust.
town gossip. <clears throat> Pascal's. Oh, I didn't ask him about the fact that the victim was outside. I should ask him that. Pascal, wasn't one of the victims found outside your store? Yes, it was. I still can't believe it. They found her early in the morning, just as I was unloading some produce. It was a terrible shock. I never imagined something like this could happen in our beautiful town. What did you notice about the scene when you found the body? Well, it was really quite gruesome. I could barely look at her. Her face was all contorted in pain, and there was blood everywhere. It was like something out of a horror movie. I can't stop thinking about it, to be honest. It's really shaking me up. Hmm. I don't feel like that's gonna go anywhere. Um... Chief Gretzky, are there any witnesses I can speak to? Chief, hello. Well, hello there. What brings you to my office, detective? Are there any witnesses I can speak to? Witnesses? For what exactly? <laughs> Were there any witnesses to the murders? The murders? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're referring to, detective. Okay, this guy's an idiot. He's not gonna be any help. Um... Coral... Oh, is that the Velvet Lounge? That must be. Hello? Well, well, well. Aren't you a curious one? What brings you here? I'm investigating the murders. Murders? How intriguing. Do you think they're related to the shows we put on? Possibly. What do you think? I don't know, but it's quite possible. It's certainly been a topic of conversation among us performers. Have you found any leads? I wish I had. I don't even know where to start, though. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Say, have you spoken to the other dancers? They might have seen or heard something that could help. I'd like to speak to them. Do you, who are the other dancers? Oh, you'd like to speak with the other dancers? Of course. There's the lovely Lulu LaRue, the charming Gentle Tantley, and the daring Delilah D'Amour. Would you like me to introduce you to them? That would be wonderful, thank you. Great, are you excited to see our performance? The show tonight is going to be amazing. I'll try to swing by and catch it, thank you. You're welcome. And yes, please do come by. You won't regret it. We put on a marvelous burlesque dance that will make you forget all about the troubles of the world. It's my passion to perform, and seeing the joy it brings to people is truly fulfilling. Why do I feel like she's gonna murder me? <laughs> she's like, oh yes, come by the performance, you won't regret it. We're going to stab you with a stiletto. Um, dancer... Oh, the Velvet Room was the stiletto as well. Hayley Greenwood. Did you know Hayley Greenwood? Hayley Greenwood. Yes, of course, she was a fellow performer. It's so tragic what happened to her. Poor thing. Do you have any leads on who might have done it? Not yet, but I'm trying. That's good to hear. Say, have you been to Caban Violet before? What did you think of the place? No, this is my first visit. Can you tell me what Miss Greenwood was like? Sure, Haley was a lovely person. 
She was always so kind and friendly to everyone. She had a real passion for dancing and performing, just like the rest of us. Why do you ask? Do you think anybody would have any reason to hurt her? Why, I can't imagine anyone would want to harm her. She was such a sweet girl, I don't know of any enemy she had. Did something happen to her? I believe she was found dead outside this club. Oh my, outside the club. How terrible. Do the police have any leads on who might have done it? No, we're just beginning our investigation. Well, in that case, I hope your investigation goes smoothly. I'm always curious to know how these sorts of things turn out. What's your next step in the investigation? I'd like to find out more about Miss Greenwood and who could possibly have wanted to do this to her. Thank you for your concern. If you need any help, please let me know. By the way, what do you think of our costumes? Do you like them? They're great. They're really good. I don't think that yielded anything, did it? So, uh, felt like she was going to hurt me, and she did know Haley as a performer. And the oh, I didn't ask. She said the performers have their own theories, but I wonder if that's just going to be like like the same as talking to Pascal. Coral Country Club. Circus Saxobar. I'll try the country club. Hello? Hi there, how can I help you today? I'm investigating the recent murders. Oh, really? What do you need from me? Do you know anything about the victims? I'm afraid I don't know much about the victims. Could you tell me who they were? Maria Jansen, Haley Greenwood, and Nicola Grossman. Oh my, that's terrible. I had no idea. Do you have any leads on who could be behind these awful crimes? Not yet, no. Did you know any of the victims? Actually, now that you mention it, I did know Maria Jansen. We used to hang out together with Mr. and Mrs. Potter before she was murdered. Why do you ask? Mr. and Mrs. Potter? Before You mean Victor Potter? Wait, what do you mean by that? Victor Pasta. Sorry, I misspoke. I meant Mr. Potter. Was that Victor Potter? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Are you saying that Mr. Potter was involved in the murders? Yes, that's right. Mr. and Mrs. Porter were good friends of Maria and me. But why are you asking about them specifically? I'm just trying to learn more about the victims and find out what they were like. Well, if you're looking for information on the victims, then maybe you should speak with Mr. and Mrs. Potter directly. They might be able to provide some useful insight. But why are you so interested in the victims? Do you have any leads on who might have committed these murders? I believe Mrs. Potter's husband is dead. What? Mrs. Pasha's husband is dead? How is that related to the recent string of murders in vaudeville? Give up. I'm gonna have to just start completely typing soon. I don't know how to... Make my voice more recognizable. Pascal's. Mrs. Potter. 
Oh dear, it seems I've misplaced my favorite pearl necklace. How careless of me. But Wait, what was that lady's name? I'm sorry, what was your name? Detective Martini. Sorry for not introducing myself earlier. My name is Michelle. And may I say, you look quite dashing in that coat. It suits you well. Thank you, Michelle, but I'm here strictly on business. Perhaps we should keep it professional. Of course, I understand. But I'm curious, what kind of business brings you to the country club? Oh, I see. I'm sorry if I'm being nosy. It's just that I'm always interested in what's going on. All right, Michelle. Hidden on me. Mrs. Potter. Well, well, well. Isn't life a little bit more exciting when things don't go as planned? I'm sorry, what what didn't go as planned? Oh, nothing specific. Life, in general, can be quite unpredictable, and it's best to enjoy the ride while we can. Don't you think? I agree with you. Do you spend much time with Michelle? Miss S. Yeah, Michelle. Such a sweet girl, but she can be a bit dull at times, don't you think? We don't see each other as often as we used to. But enough about that. What brings you here today? How well did you know Maria Jansen? Maria Jansen. Oh, such a tragic end for her. I can't say I knew her very well, but it breaks my heart to hear of anyone's untimely death. It's a reminder that we should live each day to the fullest, don't you think? When did your husband pass? It's been two years now since my dear Victor passed away. It was a terrible loss for me, but I've learned to keep myself busy with my hobbies and interests. Life goes on, doesn't it? Michelle says you and Maria and her and your husband spent a lot of time together. Oh, really? I'm afraid that's not entirely true. But I can understand why she might think that. After all, people do like to talk and speculate about others. But enough about that. Let's talk about something more pleasant, shall we? So the four of you weren't friends? I'm sorry, but that's not accurate. I'm feeling a bit sad now, and I don't think talking about my late husband and friends is the best topic of conversation. But I'm sure you'll find someone else to chat with about such things. I'm sorry to have upset you, Miss Potter. I'll leave you alone. No need to apologize, dear. And thank you for understanding. But before you go, let me give you a piece of advice. Always trust your intuition and never let anyone tell you what to do. Life is too short to worry about what others think. That's great advice, thank you. Uh, if I'm trusting my intuition, it's definitely still the... the... the cop. Chief, do we know anything about Michelle from the Country Club? Michelle from the Country Club? No, I don't think I've heard of her. Who is she and what does she have to do with the case? You're useless. Oh, Jesus. Well, I must say, that's quite the exclamation. But don't worry, my dear friend, I am not the Messiah. Merely a mortal man with a knack for business and investing. Now, if you don't mind, I have matters to attend to. Oh, you're a businessman? You, you Did you happen to know Nicola? Ah, Nicola. A true diamond in the rough, if I may use such an obscure idiom. Yes, I knew him rather well, and his passing has been a great loss for us all. But I'm sure his legacy will live on through those of us who knew him best. What legacy is that? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. Are you asking me to define the concept of a legacy? Because I'm afraid that's a bit too elementary for my taste. 
Or perhaps you're asking me to explain how one's influence can continue to be felt even after their death. In that case, I'd be happy to oblige, but I'm not sure it's relevant to our current conversation. No, I mean Nicola's legacy. What was his legacy? Nicholas's legacy? Oh, my friend, you are barking up the wrong tree. No! Like trying to teach a cow to dance, some <laughs> things are simply not possible. But if you must know, Nicola was an innovator, a pioneer in his field. Always pushing the boundaries and never satisfied with the status quo. His impact will be felt for years to come, mark my words. Did you two work together or something? Work together? My dear friend, that's like asking if the sun and moon work together to light up the sky. We were more than just colleagues, we were kindred spirits. Two peas in a pod, if you will. But enough about me and my dear friend, let's talk about what brings you here today. You must miss him dearly. Miss him? As they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder, but in this case, it's more like out of sight. Out of mind. But don't get me wrong, my friend, Nicola was a brilliant mind and a wonderful companion in business and in life. Do you know if he had any enemies? Enemies? My dear friend, that's like asking if a fish has feathers. It's an absurd question. But let me tell you this, in the world of high society and big money, you're bound to make a few enemies along the way. It comes with the territory. But as far as my dear friend Nicola is concerned, he was loved and respected by all who knew him. Do you have any theories about his murder? My theories? Well, I'm afraid I don't have any theories at the moment. I leave that sort of thing to the armchair detectives and the amateur sleuths. As for me, I prefer to focus on the present and future rather than dwell on the past. After all, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Michelle, do you still spend time with Mrs. Potter? Oh, Tasha, yes, I know her. Why do you ask? Mrs. Potter. Oh, you mean Tasha Potter? Yes, we used to hang out together at social events before the tragedy. We haven't seen each other much lately, though. Is there something specific you want to know about her? Yeah, sure, what's she like? Why do you want to know what she's like? Are you investigating her some- Oh my god. I don't even know if that's a person. Is that his name? Uh, I'm gonna need a lot of help on this. I don't know what to do next. What was down here? Blackwoods. Oh, hello? Greetings, my friend. It is rare to see strangers in the Blackwoods Forest. What brings you here? I'm investigating a murder. A murder, you say? How dreadful. The creatures of the forest have been whispering about it. They say it is a dark time for vaudeville. But what can an old hermit like me do to help with such a matter? I'm sure you could help in a number of ways. For example, could you tell me what the creatures have been whispering? Ah, the whispers of the creatures. Yes, they do speak to me from time to time. But their words are often cryptic and difficult to decipher. The river once whispered to me, the monster stopped by me to let the beast rest. It was only later that I realized it was talking about the murderer taking refuge in the woods. But please, do not rely on my cryptic messages alone. You must seek out other sources of information as well.
you don't believe that the murderer did take refuge in the woods? Oh, my dear, I am but an old hermit. I cannot say for sure what happened. But the forest is full of secrets and mysteries that even I cannot fully comprehend. All I can do is share what the forest has shared with me. It is up to those who hear the message to interpret it as they see fit. Would you please share what it has shared with you? Of course, my friend. The creatures of the Blackwoods have been whispering about the recent murders in Vaudeville. But their messages are often cryptic and difficult to decipher. The grass said to me, the wind carries the scent of death, and the mushroom said, the roots of evil run deep, but what do these messages mean? I am but an old hermit, and my mind is not as sharp as it used to be. Perhaps you can make sense of them. I think you're my favorite character so far. My dear, what kind words you have for an old hermit like me. You have made my heart sing with joy. Though my words may be confusing at times, it is my hope that they can still bring some insight and comfort to those who seek it. It is a great honor to serve as the protector of the Blackwoods, and to know that my words can still touch the hearts of others is a great comfort to me. Thank you for your kindness, my friend. You're welcome. Thank you for putting a smile on my face. Thank you for your graciousness, my friend. It warms my soul to hear that I have brought a smile to your face. I must confess, however, that sometimes I worry that my cryptic messages may be more frustrating than helpful. It is not easy being an aging hermit, as one's mind can often play tricks on them. But I am grateful for the company, and the chance to share what little wisdom I have gleaned from a lifetime spent in the embrace of the forest. So thank you for your patience and understanding, my friend. I've enjoyed your company. Would it be okay if I return and visit you again sometime? Oh, my dear friend, you are always welcome in the Blackwoods. It is a rare treat to have visitors, and even rarer to have such kind and thoughtful ones. Your presence brings light to my otherwise solitary life. Please do come back and visit any time you like. The creatures of the woods will be waiting to whisper their secrets to us, and my door will always be open for you. Oh, I love that lady. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> she is actually way more helpful than anyone else. Well, equally helpful. Alright, grave and mana. Hello, Count Gravison? Yeah, good morning. What brings you here today? Are you here to take a look at my collection of rare items and memorabilia from all over the world? Is that smoke back there? Oh, that's just a fireplace. It's a beautiful piece of art created by a famous bohemian sculptor. Would you like to see it up close? No, thank you. I'm here to investigate the murders. Murders in vaudeville. That's very concerning. I hope you can catch the culprit soon. Do you have any leads? No, we don't have any leads yet. Have you heard anything about the crimes? I'm afraid not, Detective Martini. I've been quite occupied with my own interests and hobbies lately. Tell me more about the situation. Have there been any similarities between the victims or anything else that might help with the investigation? Did you know any of the victims? No, I'm afraid not. But I'm curious, can you tell me more about the victims? What kind of people were they? I'll do the investigating, and I'm afraid I can't share that information with the public. Of course, detective. My apologies if my curiosity got the best of me. Is there anything else you need from me or my help with the investigation? Why are you so interested in the investigation? Well, the safety and well-being of the citizens of Vaudeville is important to me. 
and with all the excitement surrounding these events, it's only natural to be interested in the case and the progress of the police's investigations. Circus, country club, been there, been there, Carl. Carl? Hello? Oh, hi there. It's so nice to see you again. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. It's always so nice to chat with you. You have such an interesting job, and it's great to hear about all the things you're working on. Do you know what I'm working on at the moment? Well, not exactly, but I know you're a detective, so you're probably investigating something important. Whatever it is, I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job. What's on your mind? Thank you for the encouragement. Uh, my mind is troubled because I can't find out anything about these recent murders. Sure, I'm so sorry to hear that. It must be really frustrating to be unable to find any leads. It's hard to imagine what it must be like for you, but please don't give up hope. If anyone can solve this case, it's definitely you. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Did you know any of the victims? Yes. Actually, Haley Greenwood was a friend of mine. We met at a dance class and hit it off right away. She was such a talented dancer, and it's so sad to think that she's gone now. But at least she'll always be remembered for her incredible talent and kind heart. You and her took dance classes together? Yes, we did. We took classes together at Coral, the bar downtown that's decorated with undersea material. It's a great place for dancers from all over the world to start working in vaudeville. Before moving to bigger stages. It's so cool that we got to be a part of that community and so grateful for the time we spent together. Did she like to go to the Velvet Room? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Haley and I mostly hung out at dance class or at the park, so we didn't really go out to bars or clubs that often. But if she ever wanted to go to the Velvet Room, I would have been more than happy to go with her. It sounds like a really fun spot, and I'm always down for a good night out. Do you know if she had any enemies? Enemies? No, not that I know of. Everyone who knew her loved her. She was such a kind and genuine person, and she never said a bad word about anyone. It's hard to imagine anyone wanting to hurt her. Why would you ask? I'm trying to figure out how anyone would want to hurt her. That's a good point. It's really difficult to understand why someone would want to harm Haley or any of the other victims. They were all just innocent people going about their lives, trying to pursue their dreams and make the world a better place. It's so sad to think that they were taken from us too soon. But we have to keep hope alive and keep searching for answers. Maybe there's something we haven't thought of yet that could help crack the case. Well, I hope you'll let me know if you think of it. Of course, I'll definitely let you know if I think of anything. And speaking of things to be excited about, guess what? I finally got my first audition for a professional ballet company. I've been practicing so hard for this, and I'm feeling more confident than ever. It's such an amazing opportunity, and I can't wait to see where it takes me. 
congratulations. Did Haley want to join the ballet as well? Actually, Haley was more into contemporary dance than classical ballet. She was a really innovative and creative dancer, and she loved to experiment with new forms and styles. I always admired her for that. It's so important to be true to yourself and your artistic vision, and Haley was a shining example of that. I hope I can be as brave and innovative in my own dancing as she was. What was she doing for work before she died? Haley was working as a freelance choreographer and performer. She was incredibly talented and had a real gift for creating beautiful, meaningful dances. I was lucky enough to work with her on a few projects and it was such an amazing experience. She had such a unique perspective on movement and expression and she was never afraid to take risks and try something new. I think that's why so many people were drawn to her work. She was a real trailblazer in the world of modern dance and she'll be sorely missed. Where are your shoes? Oh, I don't really need shoes right now. I'm feeling so confident and alive that I could practically fly. Besides, I've been dancing barefoot for years and it's become sort of a signature look for me. It's all about being true to yourself and your own sense of style, you know? And right now, I'm feeling pretty darn stylish. You're very stylish, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I've always been passionate about fashion and expressing myself through my clothes. I think that's why I was drawn to dance as well, it's another way to convey emotion and tell a story through movement. It's so amazing to be able to channel all of that creative energy into something beautiful and inspiring. I feel so lucky to be able to do what I love every day and have friends like you to share it all with. Do you know any of the performers from The Velvet Room? Oh, I've actually been to the Velvet Room a few times. It's such a cool spot, and the performers there are all incredibly talented. I remember seeing this one burlesque act that was just mind-blowing. The dancer had such grace and power, as she really knew how to work the crowd. It was such an electric atmosphere, and I felt so inspired just being there. I'm really grateful for all the opportunities Vaudeville has given me to explore my art and connect with other artists. It's such a vibrant and exciting place to be. Do you have any friends there? Yeah, I have a couple of friends who perform there. They're all so amazing and dedicated to their craft. I think that's what I love most about the arts community here in Vaudeville. Everyone is so passionate and supportive. And there's always something new and exciting happening. It's like there's this endless well of creativity and inspiration and we're all tapping into it together. I feel so lucky to be a part of it all. Do you spend much time with poets? Yes, I love spending time with poets. There's something so magical about the way they can weave words and create these incredible images and emotions. I have a few poet friends who I love to collaborate with on projects. We'll work on dance pieces that are inspired by their writing. Or they'll write poems based on my dancing. It's such a fun and stimulating way to push our artistic boundaries and explore different forms of expression. Plus, poets have this incredible ability to really dig deep into the human experience and uncover truths that we might not even be aware of. Do you know anything about this secret society of artists and poets? I'm actually not sure what you're referring to. I haven't heard anything about a secret society of artists and poets. But it sounds so intriguing, like something straight out of a novel or a movie. I'm always up for a little mystery and adventure, especially when it involves the creative world. Who knows what amazing ideas and collaborations could come out of something like that. Maybe we should start an unofficial club of our own and see where it takes us. Yeah, good luck with that. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to keep pursuing my dreams and seeing what new opportunities come my way. There's so much potential and possibility out there, and Do I can't you know, wait to explore it all. 
Do you know the anybody arts community with in Vaudeville is such an incredible source of inspiration and support. And I feel so lucky to be a part of it. Whether I'm dancing, collaborating with other performers, or just soaking up the energy of the city. I know that there's something special here that can't be found okay. anywhere else. Okay, do you know anybody with sharp teeth? Hmm, sharp teeth. I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about some sort of vampire or werewolf situation? Because as far as I know, those are mostly fictional creatures. Alright, everybody is so super unhelpful. Monsieur! You call this a challenge? I face lions more dangerous than any storm. You've faced lions? Of course, my dear. I'm a lion tamer after all. How do you like your work? I love it. How long have you been doing it? Long enough to be the best. Ever had problems with your lions escaping? My lions don't escape. And how is the circus doing at the moment? Our circus is doing better than ever. Thank you for asking. Do you have many friends in Vaudeville? Yes, I have many friends in Vaudeville. Did you ever spend time with Maria Jansen, Haley Greenwood, or Nicola Grossman? I don't know anything about those people. Have you heard about the recent murders in Vaudeville? Yes, I've heard about them. Any theories? No, not really. Do you go to the Velvet Room very often? That's none of your business. Do you know Miss Potter? Yes. What's the re what's the nature of your relationship with her? It's none of your business. A little bit hostile, aren't you? Just a bit. Why is that? Because you're asking questions that are irrelevant to me and my work. I speak to about my investigation. You should speak to Chief Grayski and the police. They are the only ones with the authority to formally accuse anyone. Am I keeping you from something? Yes. Busy day today? Always. Why is that? I have a circus to run. Do you 
you get much free time. No. Ever heard of work-life balance? Ah, uh, what's that supposed to mean? Don't you think you should have more balance in your life? Not really. I hear people who work as hard as you often suffer burnout. That's none of your business. What sort of patrons come to your circus? The vast and most elite patrons from all over the world. Do you know people from the country club? Yes, they come to my circus. Do you know Michelle? Which Michelle? Be more specific. Michelle from the country club. No, I don't know any Michelles from the country club. Do you know the Count? Of course, I'm friends with many towns. That guy's name. Count. Graveson. Are you familiar with Count Graveson? Count Graveson. Of course, I know him. Who doesn't? Does he support your circus? No, he's just one of our many admirers. Would you say you're friendly with him? I'd rather not say. Does the circus employ any of the dancers from the local clubs and classes? No, we don't employ any dancers from local clubs or classes. If an animal from your circus was suspected of attacking someone, what would you do? Our animals are perfectly trained and pose no threat to anyone. Do you know of any people with sharp pointed teeth? No, I don't know of any people with sharp pointed teeth. Does the circus employ any people with interesting traits? Yes, we have the most exciting freaks and artists from all over the world. What makes them exciting? Their unique and extraordinary talents, of course. So unhelpful as well. Station. I feel like I've been everywhere now. Country club. Cast girls. Pascal, help! I don't know what to do. Sure, and here to help. What's going on? I have no leads in this investigation, I don't know what to do. Oh my, that sounds like a tough situation. Have you tried talking to people in the community? Maybe someone has heard or seen something that can be helpful. And don't forget to check social media, people often share information there. But when I heard that there's a new cafe in town where people like to gossip, maybe you can find something there. What's the name of the cafe? Um, I can't quite remember the name, but I know it's located near the park on Main Street. 
It's a popular spot for artists and writers to gather, so you might find some interesting leads there. But be careful, some of those creative types can be a bit eccentric. What do you have for me, Detective Martini? Absolutely. Don't keep me waiting. I have absolutely nothing, and I don't know where to look for more information. Well, that's a shame. Have you tried talking to witnesses or reviewing surveillance footage? Maybe we can get some leads from there. Where could I review the surveillance footage? Hmm, I'm not sure. But have you checked with the businesses around the areas of the murders? They might have some security cameras that could have captured something useful. And which, which witnesses should I speak to? I'm not sure who you've already spoken to, but it could be worth checking with neighbors. Co-workers, friends, family, or anyone who may have been in the area at the time of the crimes. It's important to cast a wide net when it comes to gathering information. Uh, Pascal, does your store have any security surveillance? Oh, no, Detective Martini. What a surprise to see you here. Security surveillance. No, I don't have any of that fancy stuff. My shop is a friendly place where everyone knows each other. I rely on my customers to keep an eye out for each other. But why do you ask? Has something happened? Yeah, there was a murder outside your store. What? A murder outside my store? I can't believe it. That's terrible news. Poor Maria Jansen. I found her body early in the morning, before the store opened. I still can't believe it. She was such a nice girl. You said people around here look out for each other. Do you know of anybody who saw of anything? Well, I don't want to accuse anyone without proof, detective. But I do know that Vaudeville is a small town, and people talk. If there was anything suspicious going on, I'm sure I would have heard something by now. But as far as I know, Nobody around here had anything against poor Maria. She was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, I guess. Do you know anybody who might have seen something? Hmm, that's a good question, detective. I'm not sure, but I can ask my customers if they saw or heard something. The thing is, my shop is always so busy, and people come and go all the time. It's hard to keep track of who saw what. But I'll definitely ask around and see if anybody knows something that might help with the investigation. Thank you, I appreciate it. Sure, Detective Martini. I'm happy to do anything I can to assist with this case. It's a terrible tragedy, and we all need to work together to find out who did this. Speaking of which, did you hear the latest gossip about the Baroness? Apparently, she was seen having an affair with her gardener. Can you believe it? Yeah, who, who is the Baroness's husband? The Baroness's husband? That would be the Duke of Wittenberg, of course. He's quite a character, that one. Always throwing lavish parties and spending money like it grows on trees. But between you and me, I think he's a bit of a fool. The real power behind the throne is the Baroness herself. She's the one who really runs things around here. And now with the scandalous news about her and the gardener, who knows what will happen next. It's all so exciting. Where can I find the Baroness? Oh, the Baroness. She's probably at her state, the Gravison Manor. It's a beautiful place, with gardens and fountains and all sorts of lovely things. I've heard that she spends most of her time there, entertaining guests and planning her social events. If you want to talk to her, you might try going there. But be warned, she's a very busy woman, and she doesn't suffer fools gladly. Good luck, Detective Martini. Do you know anything about the gardener she's having an affair with? Do 
do you know anything about the gardener she's having an affair with? Guess not. Hello, Count Gravison. Where can I find the Barrett's, the, the Baroness? That's great to hear. So, where exactly are you looking for the bear? In which Baroness are you referring to? Where can I find your wife? I'm sorry, but I'm not married. Is there anything else I can help you with? I understand the Baroness lives here. Yeah, now it makes sense. You're probably referring to my dear friend, the Baroness von Hirsch. She visits me occasionally, but she doesn't live here. May I ask why you're looking for her? I heard a rumor that she might be having an affair with a gardener. Oh really? That's quite an interesting rumor. Do you have any evidence to support this claim, or is it just hearsay? It's just hearsay, but I'd like to speak to her about it. Well, if you're interested in speaking to the Baroness, you could try contacting her directly. She's a busy woman, but she might be willing to speak with you if you have a good reason. Would you like me to give you her contact information? Yes, please. May I ask, what brings you to Vaudeville, Detective Martini? Are you here on official police business or is it a personal matter? Do you know where the Baroness's husband is? I'm not entirely sure where the Baroness is at the moment, but I could try to find out for you. Why are you so interested in speaking with her? Do you know where her husband is? Hmm, <laughs> interesting question. Are you looking for the Baron von Hirsch as well? Or is there another reason you're asking about him? Yes, I'm looking for him. Do you know where he is? Certainly, Detective Martini. It's possible the Baron is at his estate in the countryside, but it's hard to say for sure. Would you like me to try and find out his whereabouts for you? No, thank you. That's fine. Does the the manor employ a gardener? Pardon me, but could you please rephrase your question? Do I'm you... not sure what you mean by the mentor employee gotten. Actually, never mind. It seems like there was some kind of misunderstanding. Is there anything else you need help with, detective? Do you employ a gardener here? Yes, we have a few gardeners who take care of the grounds here. Are you interested in gardens, Detective Martini? Or is there a particular reason you're asking about our gardeners? What are their names? We have a team of three full-time gardeners who work on the estate. Their names are Hans, Franz, and Johan. Why do you ask, Detective? Are you looking to hire a gardener for your own property? No, but I'd like to speak to your gardeners, if possible. Of course, Detective Martini. May I know what you'd like to speak to my god about? Is there something specific that you need help with? I need his help with my investigation. Oh, really? How can our gardener be of assistance to you in your investigation? Do you suspect that something related to the recent murders happened on our grounds? Your, your collection of curiosities, does it have any teeth or false teeth in it? That's an interesting question, Detective Martini. Why do you ask about teeth or false teeth? Is there something specific you're looking for? My collection does have a few items that might interest you, including some dental tools and prosthetic teeth from various cultures. Would you like to take a look? Yes, please. What can you tell me about these prosthetic teeth? Yeah, the prosthesis teeth. They are quite fascinating, really. I have a set from ancient Egypt, made from ivory and gold. And another set from Japan, made from porcelain. They were used by the samurai warriors to intimidate their enemies. Do you have a particular reason for asking about them, detective? Have any of them gone missing recently? 
Missing. No, not to my knowledge. Why do you ask, Detective Martini? Is there a specific item from my collection that you're interested in? No, I'd just like you to check that they are still in your possession. Certainly, Detective. I shall have my curatorial staff check on the items in my possession to make sure everything is accounted for. But may I inquire as to why you seem so curious about my curiosities? Do you have a passion for collecting rare items, like myself? Or is there something else that interests you about my hobbies and interests? No, it's confidential at the moment, thanks. Sure, Detective Martini. I completely understand the need for confidentiality. However, I am happy to assist you in any way possible. I don't believe anybody's happy to assist me in any way possible. Where do I go? Help! Dada is always here to offer her wisdom and guidance. What troubles you, my dear? Dada, I don't know what to do anymore. My child, when a river flows, it doesn't ask where it's going. It simply trusts the journey. Sometimes, it's okay to let go and trust that the path will reveal itself to you. Perhaps take a moment to meditate and focus on your inner voice. It may guide you in ways you never thought possible. It's not guiding me, and I need to find out who killed these poor people. Ah, I see. The Blackwoods has been a peaceful place for many years, and the recent events have shaken us all. But remember, the answers you seek may not be found in the usual places. Have you tried speaking to the creatures of the forest? They may have seen or heard something that could help you. I would like to try and speak with them. How do I do so? To speak with the animals, you must first learn to listen. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, and let the sounds of the forest fill your ears. Listen carefully, and soon you will hear their voices. Remember, they are shy and may not reveal themselves right away. But if you show them kindness and respect, they may just open up to you. How long must I wait? Oh, my dear, time is a funny thing. It moves differently for each of us. Sometimes, a moment can feel like an eternity, and other times, a lifetime can pass in the blink of an eye. But don't worry, the creatures of the Blackwoods will come when they are ready. In the meantime, why not take a walk through the woods and enjoy the beauty around you? You never know what you might discover. Thank you. Would you walk with me? You're welcome. My child, unfortunately, I cannot leave my location in the heart of the forest. But I will be here, meditating and praying for your safety and success. Remember, even when you are alone, you are not truly alone. The spirits of the forest are always with you, watching over you and guiding you. Trust in their wisdom, and you will find your way. Thank you, Dada. You're welcome. I am glad I could offer some guidance, but please do not mind if my words are not as clear as they once were. Sometimes, I fear that I may not express myself clearly enough, and it can be difficult for others to understand me. But I do hope that I have been able to help in some small way. Who should I accuse of the murders? I'm sorry, my dear, but I cannot answer that question. Only Chief Gradsky and the police can formally accuse anyone. But remember, accusations are not always the answer. It's important to seek justice, but also to approach the situation with kindness and understanding. Not everybody who steps on the grass is walking in their own shoes, as the grass told me. Whose shoes were they walking in? Well, my child, that is a mystery that only the universe can unravel. 
but perhaps, instead of focusing on whose shoes they were wearing, we can focus on how we can help them walk in their true path. Sometimes, all it takes is a little bit of guidance and support to help someone find their way. Was someone walking through the woods in stilettos? Stilettos in the woods. Now that's an image that's hard to imagine. But remember, my dear, the Blackwoods is a place of wonder and magic. Anything is possible here. Perhaps it wasn't stilettos at all, but the hooves of a mystical creature, or the footsteps of a lost soul searching for their way home. The forest has many secrets, and sometimes, it's best not to question them too deeply. Do you ever speak to the creatures of the circus? Oh my, the creatures of the circus. I must admit, my child, that I have not had the pleasure of speaking with them. But I have heard many stories about their incredible talents and abilities. They are truly a marvel to behold. However, I must confess that I am feeling a bit insecure about my own abilities to communicate clearly. Sometimes, I fear that my words may be misunderstood or misinterpreted. But I suppose that's just the nature of communication, isn't it? We can only hope that our message is received as we intended it. What do the creatures of the Black Woods look like? Ah, the creatures of the Black Woods. What a wonderful question, my dear. I'm afraid that I cannot describe them in a way that would do them justice. Each one is unique and special, with their own personality and quirks. Some are small and delicate, like the butterflies that flit through the trees. Others are large and powerful, like the bears that roam the forest floor. But all of them are beautiful in their way. And even though I may not always understand their language, I know that they are always there for me. Watching over me and guiding me. Have you spoken to any bears lately? Birds, my child. Why, I speak to them every day. They are some of my dearest friends in the whole world. They sing to me in the morning and help me find my way when I'm lost in the woods. And they are such great listeners. Sometimes, I'll tell them stories or share my worries with them, and they'll just sit there and listen, nodding their little heads in understanding. They're truly a gift from the universe. Do any of the creatures in the Blackwoods have large, pointed, sharp teeth? Hmm, large, pointed, sharp teeth, my dear. I must admit, I'm not sure. But the Blackwoods is home to many creatures, some of which may have sharp teeth. But don't worry, my dear. Even if they have sharp teeth, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are dangerous or aggressive. In fact, many of the creatures in the Blackwoods are quite gentle and kind. And if ever you feel unsure or afraid, remember to take a deep breath and call upon the spirits of the forest for guidance and protection. Do you think a creature from the Blackwoods would attack a person in Vaudeville? Oh my, my child, I'm not sure. It's important to approach all situations with caution and respect, whether we're dealing with humans or animals. But I know that the creatures of the Blackwoods are very protective of their land and their fellow inhabitants. And they would never attack someone without reason. It's important to treat them with kindness and understanding, and to always respect their boundaries. And who knows, maybe one day you'll have the pleasure of meeting some of these incredible beings for yourself. Do you think they would have a reason to attack Maria Jansen? I'm sorry, my dear, but I cannot say for certain. The reasons behind these tragic events are still a mystery, and it's not my place to speculate or accuse.
I really don't know what to do. I guess I can accuse. Have you made up your mind, Detective Martini? No. I don't know who I like for this. I can't even accuse the cop, so I was way off on that. Braverson. Kinda don't like Miss Potter, I think something's up with her, but I don't it's it's hard to know whether the AI whether the character is lying to me or the AI is lying to me. Or or just getting some things wrong. So like did she make an honest mistake did the AI make a mistake when it got wrong that that discrepancy between what she said and Michelle said or is the character trying to deceive me in some way to separate herself from the victim um this guy <laughs> this guy's the best um actually he was great too I could go back and talk to her some more she's got the stilettos she's got stilettos I guess Miss Potter must as well I don't know who would have a knife but I don't know how complicated this is going to be. Like how complex is the story? I've only got these clues. And it could be three completely different murderers, I suppose. Or even two murderers and an animal. Duchess of Kent or Baroness they referred to her as potentially having an affair don't know how to look into it though because I don't know what you can do in this game and just, you know the AI seems to think there is surveillance surveillance and I can't see any way to interact with objects or anything secret society of artists don't know I mean I could just take a while stab at it go back and question the coroner again was Michelle and that fancy guy. Lucas. And I mean it's early access so maybe it's not even finished. Maybe I, maybe you can't solve this right now. Dart is my favourite to talk to because she's nuts. And she's got stilettos. Whoa, what's up with the frame rate here, babe? strange going on there. Um, so I got the vibe again and like vibe could be just that the AI is really bad or that they've chosen a sort of um, suspicious sounding voice like with the constable um, or it could be on purpose. It could genuinely be the Pascal's Like, nobody's given me anything in terms of like, oh, did they have enemies? Did they have any drama going on? The only drama I've heard about is the, the Duchess um, having an affair, and I don't seem to be able to find out more about that because I can't find her. And the gardener. And it could just be something that AI made up. You know, maybe Pascal just makes up stuff. Plus, he doesn't know anything about what's going on outside the grocer. He doesn't know of any witnesses. Police chief didn't really give me anything. Yeah, so maybe it's just it's because it's an early access, but it was still fun. It was still fun to go around and talk to a bunch of AI. Like, I'm really looking forward to more games being like this. Just being able to, you know, play something like Starfield, um, you know, Skyrim, uh, Fallout 4 by, you know, all of them just kind of having having stuff going on but of course you kind of you don't just want it to be large language models, you want them to have some sort of agency in the world some sort of ability to understand their their world so 
you know, when the chief says, oh, check the surveillance, you want that to be something you can actually go and do. Um, yeah, so that of course might be a few years away, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'll have to check out that, that AI video again about um, games where they're sort of like procedurally generated. Otherwise, yeah, still fine as a little like conversation game. Maybe I'm just really, really dumb. I'm missing something very obvious here. If I do one more conversation, it would probably be with the coroner. Let's try her. Coroner? Wow, detective. It's interesting how much one can learn from studying the human body. Sometimes it's hard to imagine all the things that can go wrong, all the different ways that someone can meet their end. But then again, I suppose it's all part of the human experience. We're all just walking around with these complex machines inside of us, trying to make sense of it all. I don't know what to ask to help my investigation. Yeah, yes, the investigation. It's always a difficult and sensitive process, isn't it? As a coroner, it's my job to provide you with as many answers as possible, but sometimes even the most thorough examinations can leave questions unanswered. It's important to remember that the truth is often elusive and it may take time to unravel the complexities of a case. But don't worry, we'll get there eventually. It's all a matter of patience and persistence, wouldn't you agree? How much time will it take to unravel the complexities of a case? It's hard to say, detective. Every case is unique, and there are many factors that can influence the length of an investigation. Sometimes the evidence is clear and straightforward, and other times it's more complex and requires a more in-depth analysis. It's like treating a patient with a complicated medical condition, you have to be patient and methodical in your approach taking into account all the different variables and potential outcomes. But I'm confident that we'll be able to get to the bottom of this, no matter what it takes. Were there any clues on any of the victims? There are always clues, my dear. It's just a question of knowing where to look. In the cases of Maria Jansen and Haley Greenwood, there was physical trauma to the body that suggested a violent attack. In the case of Nicola Grossman, there was a wound to the back of the neck that was consistent with the knife wound. Of course, there are many other details that we have yet to uncover, but these are the most significant findings so far. It's fascinating, really, how much information we can glean from a single body. Alright, very unhelpful, and I'm tired, so I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you. Let's just accuse someone for fun, right? So, tell us, Detective Martini, who is the culprit? <laughs> I, mean, I don't have any reason to... I've got absolutely no motive, I've got nothing. Uh... I, I hardly know anybody who knew the victims. This guy, I guess, because he, he had a relationship with N Nicola. Um... And she had a relationship with the uh, uh, Haley. Oh, and she was lying about her relationship with Haley, uh, Maria. So those three. How about this guy? Interesting choice, Detective Martini. May I ask you why? They were business rivals. Oh wait, it's for each for each one. Oh, wait, 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 I want to start again. Okay. Let's see what you got. Haley! Detective Martini? Um, yeah. Are you sure, Detective Martini? And why? Is she with the stiletto? Jealousy, maybe? Punishment for sinning. Um... Jealousy? 
She did seem kind of like she'd like to just kill somebody for the thrill. Is she the one killed with the stiletto or is the other guy? Wait, I have to check my notes again now. Um... Outside the Velvet Ribbons, Stiletto. Oh, it's Nicola with the knife. Nicola. Maria was Animal Attack. Animal Attack. Oh, I wonder if that. Have you made up your mind, Haley Detective Martini? Was killed by her Interesting choice, Detective Martini. May I ask you why? Oh, maybe they were maybe it was a, like a love triangle thing. Who knows? For the thrill? She seems like someone who'd kill for thrill. Maria was killed by you. Are you sure, Detective Martini? And why? Love obsession. Maybe she was sleeping, you know, because they were all like this group of friends, maybe she was sleeping with her husband at some point before he died. And she never got over it. I don't know. Jealousy, maybe? Maybe they were... I mean, she did seem to be, like, out trying to enjoy life. Maybe she found someone new and Maria was into them. Did Maria kill the husband and she did it for revenge? I'm gonna go jealous the other Nicola! Interesting choice, Detective Business Martini. Troubles. May I ask you why? Detective Martini, this is complete nonsense. <laughs> yeah, it's about what I expected. Look, I'm trying, okay? It did just give me an idea though. What about. Ah, oh, wait, no, that was. So it doesn't even it doesn't even give you clues. It doesn't say like, oh, you got that one part right and the motive wrong. It doesn't give anything away. Um Miss Potter, are you seeing anyone at the moment? Oh, my dear, I must say that I'm not seeing anyone at the moment. But who knows what tomorrow may bring. Life is full of surprises, isn't it? Have you met any eligible bachelors since your late husband? Well, my love life has been rather dull since my husband's passing. But I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure there are plenty of eligible bachelors out there who would jump at the chance to be with a charming, classy heiress like myself. Has anyone caught your eye? I'm afraid not, my dear. Though there is one gentleman who I find particularly intriguing. But alas, he seems to be more interested in his work than in a lady's company. It's a shame, really. But who knows, maybe I'll find a way to capture his attention yet. Would you confide in me who the lucky man is? Oh, my love, it's not a matter of luck, but of charm and wit. And as for the man in question, let's just say that he's a bit of a mystery. But don't worry, I'll find a way to crack his shell eventually. That's got to be he's a sex bar, right? So interested in his work. I am the greatest lying tamer in the world, my friend. <laughs> I fear nothing, and no one can match my skills. Are you dating anyone at present? My dear friend, there is no one in prison who could handle a man of my caliber.
What do you think of Monsieur Saxabar? I decline to answer your questions. Do you often go to the circus? Oh, I used to go to the circus with my late husband. He was such a bore, always insisting on leaving early. But now that he's gone, I can stay as long as I want and enjoy all the frivolous entertainment. What do you think of the ringleader? I haven't paid much attention to the ringleader, to be honest. But I do have a fondness for the clowns. They remind me of happier times. Do you know the name of the man who runs the circus? Well, dear, I'm afraid my memory isn't what it used to be. But if you're looking for someone to blame for the recent tragedies in vaudeville, perhaps you should look closer to home. After all, Monsieur sucks of our some secret project going on, and who knows what kind of mischief he could be up to. What secret project? Oh, I'm not at liberty to say it, my dear. But let's just say that whenever there's a mystery afoot, it's always wise to keep an eye on the ones who have something to gain. What would he have to gain? Miss S, my poor late husband would never let me have any fun. He was so strict and boring. But now that he's gone, I can finally live a little. And if anyone tries to stop me, they'll have to answer to me. Okay, what the hell? Now I'm getting like... She wanted... Se Monsieur Sex... My dear, how could you even suggest such a thing? Monsieur Saksabar is a respectable businessman, and I am a widow. But if you're asking whether we've ever crossed paths, let's just say that we move in the same circles. And as for relationships, well, let's just say that a lady doesn't kiss and tell. It's a shame about Maria, isn't it? But I'm afraid I don't know much about her, her relationship with anyone else. Although, I do know that sometimes a woman can be quite persuasive when she wants something. But who knows what really happened? The truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to imply anything. I'm just feeling a bit sad about all the recent tragedies in vaudeville. Sure. But to answer your question, I don't think I ever had the pleasure of seeing Maria in action. <laughs> so to speak. But I've heard that she was quite persuasive wow. when she wanted something. Wow. <laughs> so. You heard? Yes, one hears all sorts of things when one moves in certain circles. But let's not dwell on the negative, shall we? Okay. Life is too short to be bogged down by sadness and tragedy. We should focus on living our best lives and enjoying all the pleasures that this world has to offer.
Oh, dear, you do have a way of asking the most scandalous questions. <laughs> but let's just say that if Monsieur Saksavar were to invite me to one of his exclusive parties, who am I to say no? Mm -hmm. After all, a lady must always keep her options open. Go, girl. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's good. It's the top hat. It's the the Giga Chad vibes that Moist Critical had trouble with. So, Maria was after your guy, huh? Maria was killed with the animal. Oops, she let us. Hmm. So maybe she like her and Sexabar were having a thing, and so she had access to like release a lion <laughs> to kill Maria. That's the best theory I've got so far, and it cracks me up that that's it because that's a terrible theory. So she used one of Sex, and now Sexabar feels bad about it, so he's got to find like cover for her. He, a lion came back to the circus covered in blood and gore, and he was like, oh shit. My missus has gone proper off the rails. Wait, exclusive parties? No! It booted me out again! Damn, I feel like that was getting somewhere. Anyway, I do have to call it, because that's... Uh, <laughs> That's been a lot, but that was good fun.